Reporting District, Division Plus Master B. Yeah! Welcome to Social Millennial Podcast. Ah, 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 ah. We out here, gang, gang. Y'all already know what it is. We finally came back. Um, I was thinking about not pulling up this week either, even though I said I was going to pull up. Uh, if you are not subscribed to the IG, please subscribe to the IG. That's where I'll be uh, posting messages as to when episodes will be up and when they will not be up, if we will be taking a hiatus, etc. This is the Social Media Podcast. If you're new, we are on IG, we are on TikTok, we are on Facebook at Social Millennial Pod. All right, y'all, you will find us. Make sure to like and subscribe. Follow those pages. Uh, we have a lot of fun there. Um, we are also on YouTube. Same deal at Social Millennial Pod. For those of y'all watching, what up? I see y'all. Thanks for sticking with your boy. We need the views. Like, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so that you get the notifications for when we're dropping and when you get the you can get the notifications for the premiere dates too because I like to do that. I drop these as as premieres. Uh, for those of y'all listening, we do have a visual component, so go pull up to the YouTube. Uh, those of y'all watching, we do have an audio component. Uh, head on over there. There will be links in the description. Something around uh, what a link for socials, a link for homepage that will put you to the web page version um for the audio that's where we host that there um and there will be a patreon uh link in the description so y'all can head on over to the patreon now i'm i enjoy and i'm grateful and i'm thankful and i'm blessed that y'all pull up like subscribe follow where applicable comment where applicable i want to hear what y'all think about these these things these stories that we talk about you feel me but if y'all want to help more, if y'all want to expand what I'm doing here, because I definitely have some things coming down the pike, uh, some new shows, etc., head on over to the Patreon. Link is in the description. Um, we have a supporter tier where you could just drop, you know, two dollars to three dollars. It ain't that serious. Uh, single digits, you feel me? Only single digits here. Where I'm not doing Netflix money. I'm not doing Amazon Prime money. Not doing Apple money. None of that. We're not in double digits. We are in single digits. You could hit the supporters here. You don't get any extra content, uh, but that's just so that maybe you want to support what your boy is doing um, and expanding what's happening here. You feel me? Now, if y'all want a little bit more content uh, over at the Patreon, then hit the We Here tier. Again, single digit money. This is not, I'm not trying to break the bank for y'all or with y'all. Uh, these videos take time to make. You feel me? Um, I'm I'm doing two, two, two videos a week and it's going to be upgrading to three and four. Uh, I do everything, you know, we, we get this thing edited. We get this thing uh, 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 packaged and, you know, we're bringing in some new cameras. Things cost money. You feel me? Um, soon we're going to be developing into a staff. I'm going to have a PA, etc. Uh, you know, we got to want to slide, slide, uh, slide a few bills to some people. You feel me? So if y'all want some extra content, hit the we here tier. You get a bonus episode, spicy episode, um, the video and the audio right now. The video uh, component is a little bit slow. Um, have, I, how I was having issues with the ISP. I should be catching up with uploading videos now. If you haven't noticed. We are in a different space. You see the white walls there. Oh, my Lord Jesus. It's been crazy trying to get this thing lit in some kind of interesting way. Um, we're not all the way settled in in this space yet, but we will be soon. So you will see this this back area here begin to evolve and take shape, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I will start streaming on Twitch, etc. That's coming soon too. But that'll be some of my own uh, content off, off, to, off to the side. Some of my own Marcus Pena content. What up, y'all? Welcome. So if y'all want to support, y'all can head on over there. Patreon, socials, the homepage um, will be in the description. We also have merch. So if y'all want to rep the brand, y'all want to rep social media podcast, we have everything from, from shirts, tank tops, sweatshirts, baseball style shirts. We've got baby onesies. We've got pillows. We've got wall art, all kinds of things. You name it. There's some sales going on right now that the link for that will be in the description as well. Let's get to it. How are y'all feeling these past two weeks? My Memorial Day was real chill. Didn't really do a whole lot. Um, I'm glad for it, though. I'm glad for the time off. Um, getting a lot of things done. Let me tell you, moving 
has not been the easiest thing. Um, as you can see, my hair is still kind of crazy. Um, as you can see, I'm not all the way in my sort of uniform that I'm, I usually am in. Um, we're not even all the way set up yet back here. Uh, but yeah, it has not been the easiest thing having to do with paperwork and, and there's still some more paperwork I got to do having to do with Con Edison. We're here at NYC. For those of y'all who don't know, oh my gosh, it's been rough dealing with Con Ed. I mean, I knew Con Ed was trash, but oh my Lord Jesus. Now I know, I, I know somebody who does work for Con Ed, Chris Rael, what up? How you doing? Um, I know I'm saying kind of the trash. I'm not saying you specifically, my guy. I just mean dealing with the call center, dealing with, I mean, it's it's just been rough. It's been rough and tough and tough and rough. Um, but we're getting it together. We're getting this place, whipping it into shape, making a really great creative, uh, creative area, creative space. Um, I'm very glad for it. It's been very, um, it's been a breath of fresh air, leaving sort of the, the space that we were at before. Um, I'm also going to be, uh, not only is the back of this going to be changing, but our setting will probably be changing as well. I'm experimenting with a few different studios and talks with a few different studio spaces um, to take us to the next level, to elevate, y'all. You feel me? Now, I'm glad that y'all give us the likes. I'm glad that y'all give us the listens, but definitely share this podcast with other people. Um, thank you so much for listening. I'm letting you know that y'all buying merch and y'all subscribing to the Patreon, you will see the elevation. And that the Patreon will will not only be for the Social Media Podcast. Um, I'm going to be hosting a bunch of other things. I'm going to be starting a bunch of other new shows, a um, bunch of other new audio shows, um, bunch of, a bunch of podcasts that I have in development right now. And I am a musician. I am an actor. I'm also going to be um, hosting some really cool um, um uh, first listens to my new EP, um, performance videos and things will go there. Maybe I'll do some vlogs. I don't know yet. Do some vlogging content. That'll be behind the paywall of the Patreon. Um, so a lot of things are coming. Thank y'all so much for those of y'all who are subscribed to the Patreon. Your money is going to where it's supposed to be going. Y'all are going to see this thing develop and develop and develop. Um, so yeah, I've been, been trying to handle a lot. And I'm still a musician, so I'm still out here. I'm going to be at a conference, uh, a, a crusade, if you will, Christian crusade, uh, over this weekend. Uh, it's it's going to be fire. Head on over to, 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 to IG, to Facebook, at Marcus Pena Presents, M-A-R-C-U-S-P-E-N-A. -E Probably when you type in Marcus Pena or Marcus P-E-N, I'm going to come up. Um, and follow me over there because I put all my acting and 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 – sort of my travels and experiential things as a musician over, over at those places. Um, we're growing, we're growing and growing strong on Facebook, even though I know for some of y'all Facebook is washed. Uh, but we are growing there. So, I mean, we're like t over 25, over 2,500 followers over there, 2.5 K. Um, the IG not growing so much, but y'all can help me grow that IG. You feel me? Uh, so head, so head, head on over to those two platforms. I'm also on TikTok, so if y'all want to find me there, the same kind of deal at Marcus Penny Presents, um, and follow me over there because I I do do TikTok as well um, for all of that other content. But uh, yeah, I've been I've been doing well. I've been trying to keep myself strong. You know, I'm I'm doing all doing all this moving has taken me out of my rhythm of working out and of eating what I usually eat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I'm kind of beginning to get kind of beginning to get back into the swing. Um, yeah, it's just been it's just been rough. It's been rough. Uh, let me know how, how y'all did these past two weeks. How was y'all Memorial Day? Um, oh, I had this really fun experience uh, um, running into Miro of the Victory Light podcast, uh, formerly of Diesel of Jesus and Miro. Ah, 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 BX's own. Um, that was a wild story. Maybe one day I'll talk about it. Um, over here in the podcast, not today though, because I want to get to the stories. I'm not trying to be on here too long, y'all. I'm hella tired. Like I said, getting on this mic at the top, I kind of didn't want to do an episode today. It was just going to be like, sorry, y'all. Uh, I said there was going to be another episode, um, but I'm gonna wait till next week. I was like, nah, I can't do this, especially with what's going on right now with Biden and with New York City right now, um, and the migrants and and the border. I can't not say nothing about it. 
You feel me? So I'm gonna be moving briskly. Uh, just, just, just wanted to, just wanted to give y'all something. Just, just wanted to, you know, touch and agree. You feel me? Uh, being one accord. Um, yeah. So let's get to it. I'm gonna dip my foot in, dip my foot out. We out of here. You feel me? So let's get it together. Where are we at right now? Let's go right here. Got that Wi-Fi running. Oh my lord! I'm telling you, it is is late, and I'm tired. All right, so what so what I'm gonna deal with right out the gate? Ba 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 ba. We're gonna we're gonna come out uh, with shots fired. Um, at this point, Joe Biden and his handlers, because again, this is very much so a weekend at Bernie's at Bernie's situation. If y'all have not seen Weekend at Bernie's, because I'm washed. Uh, go Google it. Weekend at Bernie's. I think there's two films, three films, maybe. Um, has to do with an enchanted thing, and and this guy's body is dead, but every time he hears music, he 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 dan- he moves and dances. It's a whole thing. Um, so basically, Biden is a puppet. It's a Weekend at Bernie situation. But the Biden administration or the powers that be, how whatever you'd like to call them, deep state, whatever it is. Talk about gaslighting us, gaslighting us regarding migrants and immigration. And we're we're, we're here in NYC, so we're feeling it as a quote unquote sanctuary state. Eric Adams and and Kathy Hochul, you know, accepting all of these migrants being bused from Texas. Um, Give us your tired, your poor. And now they're taking food and funding out of desperate New Yorkers mouths and out of the homeless's mouths and out of those who rec- who need mental health, uh, who need a, 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 a um, who who need a, a, a resources for their mental health, taking the funding from them and diverting it to the migrants that are that are here. Um, we're being gaslit, y'all. We are being supremely gaslit. And now if it was that y'all were. Y'all were somehow holding on to some shred of wanting to sort of be behind Biden or be behind Democrats or that side of the same coin. Um, I would be hard pressed to hear after y'all hear this to be hard pressed to th- that to hear that y'all would still want to cast your vote in this direction. Um, yeah, check it. Excuse me. Here we go. And this is breaking. Biden signs executive action drastically tightening a uh, uh, border. He has faced political pressure as migrants have continued to arrive at the U.S. Mexico border. This is according to NBC News. So expect some level, some wild level of left wing bias. Expect it. Um, facing mounting political pressure over the migrant influx at the southern border, President Joe Biden on Tuesday signed an executive action that will temporarily shut down asylum requests once the average number of daily encounters tops 2,500 between official ports of entry, between official ports of entry, uh, according to a senior administration official. Quote, the border is not a political issue. <laughs> oh, my Lord Jesus. Quote, the border is not a political issue to be weaponized. Biden said in a White House speech announcing the border. My nigga. Let me read that again. The border is not a political issue to be weaponized. Really? So this is what I'm saying. Gaslighting. Because we weren't just here when this nigga got elected. We weren't here. We didn't witness the campaign talking about uh, Trump wants to divide us talking about trump wants to build the wall and i want to tear down walls biden campaigned on this this very subject was used and weaponized for political gain and once biden got into office the first executive orders that he did were was was to get rid of the stay in mexico order was to to strip ice of a lot of its uh its powers basically opening up the border so you're so my nigga what what are you talking about what are you talking about not be weaponized what are you talking about when during trump's whole presidency the left slash democrat side of the coin 
was using his uh, uh his uh uh how do you say his positions or 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 yeah using his positions to try to talk crazy about him regarding the wall regarding kids in cages etc cetera, etc cetera. if if y'all if y'all don't remember the whole aoc in white at the gate and it, then it was not even real like it was a staged photo nigga nigga watch this it gets crazier the shutdown would go into effect immediately since that since the, since, since that threshold has already been been met a senior administration official said the border would reopen only once that number falls to 1500 the president's order would come under the immigration and nationality act sections 212f and 215a um, suspending entry of non-citizens who cross the southern border into the United States unlawfully. Senior administration officials said Tuesday in a call with reporters that, quote, individuals who cross the southern border unlawfully or without authorization will generally be ineligible for asylum, absent exceptionally compelling circumstances, unless they are accepted by the proclamation. Fam, this is Trump. Remember all of y'all that were like, oh, he's racist. Oh, he wants to build the wall. He wants to deport everybody. This is Trump. This is what he did. But Biden and the powers that be in the administration, first thing they did was open the borders. They opened the borders. Then they got sued. The Supreme Court said you can't open the borders. Um, the, they, they were dealing with the stay in Mexico, trying to get rid of, cause they, the idea was that they repealed the stay in Mexico order through executive order. And it was, they were sued. Supreme court was like, nah, you can't repeal. You can't do that with executive order. You can't, no, no, no. Stay in Mexico still survives. So then stay in Mexico comes back. Then they find another legal loophole to get the Supreme court to get rid of, of stay in Mexico. And so with that beginning being with that having been having gotten Lord Jesus, I'm tired with that having been been erased, our borders were essentially just open. And it's not like open like there was there are not any sections that don't have wall or not open in that there are not um, customs and border patrol, but open in that the restrictions the policies that would cause border patrol to turn people away now don't exist, did not exist. So border patrol would have interactions with people, but the people would be allowed to go through generally speaking. Um, then you had all have all the caravans. So like we don't have enough border patrol to police the border as it is. Now you have caravans of people, thousands, by th caravans by the thousands of people crossing into our border without without uh, the border patrol being properly equipped to intake those people. Anyway, let's keep going. So the official said that migrants who don't meet the requirement of having a quote credible fear when they apply for asylum will be immediately removable. And they quote anticipate that we will be removing those individuals in a matter of days, if not hours. The White House conveyed details of a long awaited move to lawmakers on Monday, but confirmed details of the executive action Tuesday morning ahead of planned remarks by the president in the East Room of the White House alongside mayors from several border towns. Quote, it's definitely a step in the right direction, said Texas State Representative uh, Eddie Morales Jr., whose district includes Eagle Pass, quote, one of a number of steps that are necessary for us to be able to secure the border. And Texas has been hit hard, hard. In 2018, the Trump. OK, in 2018, the Trump administration tried to enact similar border restrictions, but courts blocked them. The Biden administration now expects to defend the executive action against legal challenges. Right, but where where are all of the lefties? Where are all of the uh oh that's Trump is racist. He's racist for securing the border. He's racist for making sure that we don't have criminals coming across the border. And I think I talked about it in a in a past episode. They're catching legit criminals from Mexico that cross the border. Legit criminals from Nicaragua legit i mean that have names street names street nicknames like they're batman villains like for real they found out one lady who was an assassin a gang assassin and she's known for like beheading niggas and skinning that like 
crazy. So come on, y'all. Let's get it together within reason here. The executive action will also have some exceptions, um, including for unaccompanied children. In a written statement, Donald Trump campaign spokesperson Callan Levitt claimed that that, that that exception would give a green light to child traffickers and sex traffickers while reiterating the former president's rallying cry that the border invasion and migrant crime will not stop until crooked Joe Biden is deported from the White House. Republican lawmakers are slamming the move as too little too late. Quote, Biden created a crisis at the border intentionally. And that that there is a lot of evidence that shows that it was an intentional powers that be type of deal that has us in, in the quote unquote crisis that we're in. It's not really a crisis. Everything is going according to what the agenda was. Um, um, said Senator Kevin Kramer, a uh, Republican from N- Nevada. ND. What is ND? I'm bugging. Quote, the executive action has more political risk than political benefit, particularly particularly because his own base is going to reject it. And that is true. The lefties or those who were on the side of open borders, you know, no, no, he, no, no person is illegal. You can't be a human and be illegal. Those people are not going to like Biden even more now. So I definitely see this as a political tactic because, as we're going to see, he's not doing very well in the polls and he's not doing very well with Latino people regarding immigration. So it seems like they're throwing. Seems like they're throwing Hail Marys up and seeing what fucking sticks. Pardon my language. That's for the uh, that's for the bonus episode. Seeing what sticks. Um But, you know, my theory here regarding this election is that Biden is probably going to win and they're doing a lot of these little tactics, um, publicity kind of stunts um, in order to in order for the powers that be or those who are pushing the or or upholding the agenda at the higher levels above the president um, so that when it is that the when it is that the election is or the numbers are flubbed, like the numbers come in and, and electoral college votes for Biden and popular vote voted for Biden. Cause remember he was the most popular president. Joe Biden had, when he was voted in the amount of votes that Joe Biden got made him the most popular uh, president in the United States, the most popular, People voted for Biden than any other election ever. Joe Biden. The schmuck Joe Biden. The political schmuck. So let that sink in. Let that sink in. So when it is that the numbers get flubbed, when it is that we blame the ghost voting body, go back to that episode and watch that um, to know what I'm talking about. That it will kind of, it will appear like it makes sense that Biden won. Like it will appear that oh that's why oh well oh you could kind of ipso facto it you can kind of calculate it, um, because right now Biden is the most has been empirically or not 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 empirically I should say has been according to the polls the most disliked president. In the history of the United States. He's polling really bad. I mean. Real bad. People don't like him. And across the board. At this point now. At this point. It's across the board. His own constituents are like. You're trash. You're trash. So let me continue. Excuse me. But the White House has repeatedly argued. That it was. Watch watch the gaslight. And watch the, watch the political bias. Right here. Watch. If y'all don't, don't have not believed me up to this point, oh, Marcus is talking, you know, thing. It's some kind of something. Watch this. Watch this. But the White House has repeatedly argued that it was congressional Republicans who have failed to act on immigration. Earlier this year, Trump urged House GOP members to kill a bipartisan border funding bill that had been negotiated in the Senate. At the time, House Speaker Mike Johnson and other Republicans said that the Senate bill didn't go far enough and they argued that a more hardline immigration bill in the House was preferable. Now, where you might go, well, what are we talking about? Where is the political bias? First of all, 
the the bill that this person is is bringing up which they don't even really need to bring up we don't even need to blame republicans because it's not republicans fault that the first month that joe biden came in the first week uh he issued executive orders that opened the border but we're gonna take the time right now to go really it was republicans that slowed down immigration the the securing the border really because they've been calling for securing the border this entire time and democrats on the other side of the coin uh have been pushing against it and biden and his handlers themselves have been uh knowingly willingly decidedly engineering the crisis that quote unquote exists now so we're going to take the time to bash republicans in an article that's supposed to just be reporting the news and telling us what's going on one political bias Two, the bill in question was a bill that had what? Something like $500 million more earmarked for the Ukraine. And at that point, uh, a lot of members of Congress, you know, it was basically enough is enough. We've sent millions of dollars there when we need to put millions of dollars into all these other things for our own country and our own people, and we're not doing it. Um, and on top of that, we, we have to print this money in order to pump money to the Ukraine. We're not doing that anymore. That's a war that we don't need to be that, that we don't need to, that we don't need to be a part of. So that bill, this bill that they're talking about in the media got um, it was spun as if it was an immigration bill. But the reason why it didn't pass wasn't because the immigration part. It didn't pass because buried in the bill was millions and millions hundreds of millions of dollars going to the ukraine of american money we were like yeah we're not going to do that you tried to sneak more in because biden was trying to send more money or the powers that be were trying to send more money and it was getting blocked so they buried it in a in a in a in a in a quote-unquote immigration bill so that then they could get the immigration bill passed and maybe get some political points and then also do whatever the agenda is with funding the Ukraine. Because it's our, at this point, it's our money keeping the economy of the Ukraine going. Keeping the country of Ukraine afloat. Keeping the country of Ukraine a thing. It's American dollars. Um, so we're sending billions overseas. And our, our, our veterans are suffering. Who gave their life for, for this country. Really. We're sending millions and billions overseas, but are homeless. What are we doing about it? It's, it's wild. It's wild. So, so you have that political bias. Then the third, the third layer, just from that paragraph of let me put my political spin or let me pull, let me make sure that I inject what the political spin for this article is supposed to be. Around that same bill, because remember, the media at that time was pushing to the public that this was a, a, a border bill, right? Pushing, pushing, pushing um, in, in the political theater. So when there are Republicans that are like, yeah, nah, we, we don't think that this bill makes sense to, to, to ratify because we're not for giving all that money to the Ukraine. We need to allocate money elsewhere. So we're not going to sign off on sending all that money over there. Um, what the media did when these Republican senators said that is then bring in, use it as a way to bring in Trump and try to, you know, do some more finagling and besmirching in the public eye and tarnishing in the public eye of Donald Trump. So they go, oh, Trump said that the, if these people are Republicans, they should not like this bill because X, Y, Z. And Trump said some kind of word, something like that on some interview or some kind of thing, said what he thought they should do. And then they're already coming out and saying, yeah, we don't think we want to do this. So the media said, oh, so y'all are listening to Trump because somehow all Republicans are a monolith and all Republicans, again, they push us in the media. Oh, all Republicans are MAGA, red hat wearing white supremacists who... So they ran with that, that Trump was some kind of mafioso Don and has control over senators in the in the in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. Which is 
ludicrous because many Republicans do not like Donald Trump. They don't like him. So what are you talking about? Trump is not loved in the Republican Party. He's kind of just like the best of what they can get in terms of the numbers game. You know what I'm saying? The numbers game. Like people will will follow this guy and he wants to run as a Republican. So let's just do that because it will help our look. That's all it is. Trump is not really a Republican. He's not really. And he's, he said this years ago, though. Before he ever ran for president, he was much younger. It was like 92, 89, something like that. He was on some talk show. I think you you can find it. Um, you can you, you can Google it. You can you, uh, YouTube it. Um, but yeah, he talks about it. If he was ever going to run for president, he would run as a Republican because they're they're not that smart. They're they're probably more easily foolable. Because um, Trump holds a lot of different a lot of political views that are non Republican. Um, so let's get that out of the way. He's running Republican, but it doesn't mean that he is Republican. Um, but yeah, so three layers of political bias and sort of three layers of of political spin here, just in that one paragraph. They have to inject that in there because they've got to make sure that whoever is reading this or the people who do read NBC News that they are card carrying Democrats who have Trump derangement syndrome, orange man bad. Um, then they go on to talk about some things that Biden has done that nobody knew about because they have not been highlighting during the campaign the good that Biden has done, quote unquote, because there ain't none. Um, check this out, though. The executive action comes on the heels of a historic presidential election in Mexico. And just as the campaign in the U.S. ramps up, Trump has a 30 point edge with registered voters on the question of which candidate would better handle immigration and border security, including a 23 point edge among Latino voters. According to a late March CNBC national poll, many immigrant advocates are furious at the president's harsher immigration policies and argue the changes will cause chaos. And then we're just going to go into how people... You know, people who want the border open don't like this, and we're gonna sue, etc., 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 etc. Right? When asked potential lawsuit, there were cousins of being litigated. Yeah, it's it's just regular, regular schmegular. Let me know what y'all guys think about this. Is it too little, too late? Is this gonna make you go? Uh, I wasn't gonna vote because I don't want to vote for Donald Trump, but now I'm gonna vote for Biden because he he's trying to be hard on the border now. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. Let me know what y'all think. Now, this story, excuse me for yawning, I am hella tired. This story, right, you would think, oh, well, now at the very least for political points, Biden is trying, or the powers that be are trying to stabilize things, right? Whether it be for political points or just the political optics, like I said, to make it look like it would make sense for Biden to win. But watch this, right? Watch the sleight of hand that's about to happen. The misdirection that's, a, that's about to happen. Watch. So this is our next story. This is according to the New York Post. Watch this. Biden admin offers mass amnesty to migrants as it quietly terminates 350,000 asylum cases. And this happened uh, the second. This this article dropped June second. So th- this happened first. This is happening first, and then we get the executive order to to essentially like close down the border, kind of. While the Biden administration is attempting to look like it's getting tough on the border, behind the scenes, it's operating a program of quote mass amnesty for migrants. Data shows that since 2022. More than 350,000 asylum cases filed by migrants have been closed by the U.S. government if the applications don't have a criminal record or are otherwise not deemed uh, a threat to the country. This means that while the migrants are not granted or denied asylum, they don't get there. They don't have either or their cases are, quote, terminated, terminated until until a d- I'm sorry, terminated without a decision on the merits of their asylum claim. They are removed from the legal system and no longer required to check in with authorities. 
The move allows them to indefinitely roam the United States without fear of deportation, effectively letting them slip through the cracks. Quote, this is a massive amnesty under the guise of prosecutorial discretion, according to uh, Andrew Arthur, a former immigration judge who works for the Center for Immigration Studies. Quote, you're basically allowing people who don't have a right to be in the United States to be here in, in, indefinitely, he said. Uh, he, he added, quote, please let everyone know what's really going on, an ICE officer told the Post. In 2020, during the Trump administration, 48,000 migrants were ordered removed from, from the U.S. by immigration court judges. Fewer than 20,000 people were granted asylum, and 4,700 people had their cases closed or were otherwise allowed to remain in the country, according to the data collected by the Transactional Records Access Clearinghouse. In 2022, under Biden, a memo issued by ICE's, ICE's principal legal advisor, Carrie Doyle, and seen by the Post, instructed prosecutors at the agency to allow cases to be dismissed for migrants who aren't deemed national security threats. So that means that if they're not a national security threat, uh, look the other way. Let them roam. Let them do whatever they want to do. Um, that year, 36,000 were ordered removed, 32,000 were awarded asylum, and 102,550 had their cases dismissed or otherwise taken off the books, 10 times that the, 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 the number in 2014. In 2023, there were 190,000 cases in the latter category, and so far in financial year 2024, uh, which ends September 30th, the numbers are certain to surpass that with 114,000 cases closed already. The Biden, uh, since Biden assumed office, 77% of asylum seekers have been allowed to remain in the country, uh, according to TRAC. That equates to 499,000 of the 648,000 who applied for asylum in the United States in that time. The current backlog of asylum cases stands at 3.5 million and shaving more than 100,000 people a year off it makes the administration look better, sources told the Post. Once cases are closed, migrants are no longer in removal proceedings and subject to deportation. The government's default position for all migrants admitted to the border. The migrants are under no obligation to leave the United States, and once cases are, are dismissed, the person is, long, is no longer monitored by ICE and required to regularly check in with them, unlike those still pursuing asylum claims. Quote, if the case gets dismissed, you're basically back to nothing. Washington-based immigration lawyer Hector, uh, Ki, uh, Ki, Ki, Lord. Hector Quiroga told The Post, classifying that migrants with dismissed cases can't receive benefits or a work permit. Uh, Kiyoga said that for clients with, quote, quote, horrible cases, ones in which they are unlikely to ultimately prove they, they, that they need asylum, quote, that's better than having a deportation order. Once a migrant's case is terminated, the person can reapply for asylum or seek other forms of legal status in the United States. Uh, yeah, so... So we get basically amnesty for mad hundreds of thousands of migrants. Just roam and make your way here because we want you to stay here. But then we get a closing of the border. So think about it. Do we think that maybe the agenda was done? Maybe they got enough people that they needed to enact what they needed to enact to make it to make the optics look credible when Biden wins? Very interesting thoughts here because why do this? Why uh, why grant amnesty or a pseudo ipso facto amnesty, but then you're also going to be trying to claim that you're hard on the border or you're going to start being hard on the border? The agenda is working, I guess. They must be reaching the end of the agenda. Uh, but yeah, let me know what y'all think because this is definitely right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing or knows what the left hand is doing but doesn't want y'all to know what the left hand is doing. Let me know what y'all think. So, we about to be done. We we are about to be done here. Congestion pricing, ah, ah, ah. Let me just hit, let me just hit it with the, yeah. 
Y'all know what it is. Y'all know what this clap is. If you don't know, you don't know. But hashtag, hashtag, if you know, you know. Yeah. That slow clap. Congestion pricing has been postponed slash suspended indefinitely. Let's go. This is according to ABC7. The implementation the implementation of congestion pricing in New York City has been indefinitely postponed. It will not start on June 30th, as originally planned. Governor Kathy Hochul, Kathy Hochul announced Wednesday. The move marks a stunning reversal for public transit advocates who had championed the tolls as a way of raising billions of dollars for New York's beleaguered subway and commuter rail systems, which, which while reducing traffic in the city streets. Hochul said that while she remains committed to the program's environmental goals, implementing it now, as New York City is still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic, quote, risked too many unintended consequences for New Yorkers at this time. The tolling program had been scheduled to start June 30th. The governor framed her decision as economic, saying the city's recovery from the pandemic is incomplete and, quote, hardworking New Yorkers are getting hammered on costs for food, housing, and child care. The governor expressed concern. Uh, the governor expressed concern suburban commuters would choose to work from home or skip recreational visits to the city. She said nothing about politics, which undoubtedly played a role in her decision to instruct the MTA to indefinitely pause impl implementation of congestion pricing. Quote, we, we, we remain fully committed to advancing all the improvements New Yorkers have been promised, including track and signal repairs, security cameras, and extension of the 2nd Avenue subway line. She said the state had already set aside funding for the MTA in case congestion pricing was held up by the courts. Wild 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 but in a good way because we didn't need we didn't need it we didn't need it everybody was talking about how it's going to mess everything up because once you get the congestion pricing right in that means that trucks are going to have to pay extra to, to deliver in that area um that means that the goods that they're delivering are going to have to go up to cover those added shipping charges Taxi cabs are going to have to go up to offset those charges, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Local businesses are going to have to jack their prices up, et cetera, et cetera. It would create a, ch a, chain, a chain reaction in that one area of, of, of Manhattan uh, where everyone would get hammered four times as hard as they're getting hammered now because even the wealthy are struggling at this at this point. So I know that this was very political. I know that this was very, this was very a um, sort of a push by people who are influential. Um, they were already getting sued by New Jersey, the, by the state of New Jersey. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it's about time. We didn't, we never needed this. None of the community wanted this. Um, you want, they wanted to collect money to give to the racket that is the MTA. Um, and we've got slashings. We've got people killing themselves on the train. All kinds of stuff going on. Um, and they they would have wanted millions and millions and millions of dollars. So listen, listen. I'm hype because I got to drive through Manhattan. I got to hit the FDR, etc. I don't need congestion pricing. All these people who live in that area where the congestion pricing would happen, that zone, it's like the government or the state government is now taxing you or I should say taxing you for having a car and taxing you for driving the car. Um, so you got to leave or you got to come in. You got to pay to get home like crazy. Oh, yeah. My hair is wild, by the way. I'm not just like I don't care. But yeah, it, it came it came to that. The community really didn't like this, didn't like this from day one um, and continued voicing their their opinions that they did not like this. Um, so I'm very glad that we got that kind of victory. Let me know what y'all think, because I don't really have to drive down in that area that they've got designated for for um, for how do you say designated for the congestion pricing? You know, but. But I know it's on another level to then charge all these people, especially commuters from Jersey, Connecticut. The, the state governors were not consulted about this, considering that New York City is, a, is, is in fact an economic powerhouse when it comes to businesses and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, I'm starting to get too tired, y'all. It's time for me to bounce. Uh, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Are y'all hype? 
you know, send me some uh, some clapping hands. You feel me? Because I'm hype. I'm glad we finally won out. You know, forget the MTA and that mafia. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So have a great week, y'all. Uh, I may or may not have an episode coming this coming week because I've got more stuff that I've got to do here um, to kind of get things sorted and situated. So there may not be an episode uh, this coming week. Uh, But if there is, you'll be pleasantly surprised. There will not be for my Patreon subscribers. There will not be a Patreon video this week. Um, Some the Patreon content. Um, It will probably come next week. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much. Be strong. Be well. Be blessed. I used to say stay blessed. And, um, you know, I will catch y'all when I catch y'all. All right. Deuces. Deuces.